Good evening, everyone. Calling to order uh, the Town of Hingham Board of Selectmen meeting for Tuesday, April 16, 2019. Approval of the minutes. There are no minutes tonight with respect to approving. We get right to public comment. Public comment. I'm hearing none. We're going to turn to the first item on the agenda volunteer recognition. Um, ladies and gentlemen of the town, those gathered here tonight, uh, as you know, we've been uh, engaged in a rather long journey with respect to the issue of the water company. And uh, as a board, we thought it was only appropriate and fitting that we recognize the members of the Water Company Acquisition Study Committee uh, for their tireless work, dedication, and devotion um, to the town on this issue. Uh, each of these individuals, uh, volunteers, giving up of their own time, um, lending their substantial expertise to uh, an issue that's uh, perhaps uh, one of the greatest issues uh, that this town has ever and will ever consider. Um, that, you know, this, this will be joined uh, on Monday the 22nd, um, but we felt that it's appropriate now to recognize their efforts. So in keeping with that, I'd ask um, each of the four members that are present in the room tonight that sat on this committee uh, to, to join us up front so that we can uh, present a uh, proclamation to each of you. <clears throat> a lot of time or? it out there so we can do photos so if you guys want to just stand one one at a time or yeah I'm gonna do one at a time this is just, just one of, all three of you go in front and then I'll call them up okay, okay. then we get right. pictures right. Carol right. Carol I'm thinking about you in pictures I think it's appropriate that we read it, um, and it may take a little bit of time, but uh, we've got it. The Board of Selectmen hereby issues this proclamation for the exceptional work performed by Jonathan R. Asher. For as you, Jonathan R. Asher, citizen volunteer, acting as a member of the Water Company Acquisition Study Committee over the last seven years, have superbly capably and unqualifiably served the citizens of the town of Hingham in the effort to provide the public with a full and substantive understanding of the issues surrounding the acquisition of the water company known as Aquarium. Whereas you, whereas you have put forth the effort and time necessary to complete this project with leadership, determination, and enthusiasm while providing prudent fiscal management without compromising quality and whereas, with a never-ending focus on the goal, you have performed your duties with skill, foresight, and patience, while responding to the uninitiated with diligence, detail, grace, and good humor. And whereas, you have surpassed all of the aspirations for this momentous effort with unparalleled discipline and solid judgment. And whereas, this community has enjoyed the full measure of your leadership in this consequential effort of generational significance. Now therefore we, Paul K. Healy, Mary M. Power, and Karen A. Johnson, selectmen of, the, of Hingham, proclaim our heartfelt gratitude and appreciation and thanks for all you have done on our behalf and extend to you and your family a sincere well done on behalf of the town of Hingham. Signed the 16th day of April, 2019, Paul K. Healy, Miriam Power, Karen Johnson.
Board of Selectmen hereby issues this proclamation for the exceptional work performed by Edward R. Siegfried. Whereas you, Edward R. Siegfried, citizen volunteer, acting as a member of the Water Company Acquisition Study Committee over the last seven years, have superbly, capably, and unquantifiably served the citizens of the town of Hingham in the effort to provide the public with a full and substantive understanding of the issues surrounding the acquisition of the water company known as Aquarian. And whereas you have put forth the effort and time necessary to complete this project with leadership, determination, and enthusiasm, while providing prudent fiscal management without compromising quality. And whereas, with a never-ending focus on the goal, you have performed your duties with skill, foresight, and patience, while responding to the uninitiated with diligence, detail, grace, and good humor. And whereas you, as, as you have surpassed all of the aspirations for this momentous effort with unparalleled discipline and sound <coughs> judgment, and whereas this community has enjoyed the full measure of your leadership in this consequential effort of generational significance. Now therefore, we, Paul K. Healy, Mary M. Power, and Karen A. Johnson, Selectman of Hingham, proclaim our heartfelt gratitude, appreciation, and thanks for all you have done on our behalf, and extend to you and your family a sincere well done on behalf of the town of Hingham. Signed the 16th day of October 2019, Paul K. Healy, Mary M. Power, Karen A. Johnson. for this momentous effort with unparalleled discipline and solid judgment, and whereas this community has enjoyed the full measure of your leadership in this consequential effort of generational significance. Now therefore, we, Paul K. Healy, Mary M. Power, and Karen A. Johnson, select your opinion, proclaim our heartfelt gratitude, appreciation, and thanks for all you've done on our behalf, and extend to you and your family a, a sincere well done on behalf of the town of Kingham. Signed the 16th day of April 2019, Paul K. Healy, Mary M. Power, Karen Johnson. Thank you. Thank you. exceptional work performed by Robert M. Higgins. Whereas you, Robert M. Higgins, citizen volunteer, acting as a member of the Water Company Acquisition Study Committee over the last seven years, have superbly, capably, and unquantifiably served the citizens of the town of Hingham in the effort to provide the public with a full and substantive understanding of the issues surrounding the acquisition of the water company known as Aquarian. And whereas you have put forth the effort and time necessary to complete this project with leadership, determination, and enthusiasm while providing prudent fiscal management without compromising quality, and whereas with a never-ending focus on the goal, you have performed your duties with skill, foresight, and patience while responding to the <coughs> uninitiated with diligence, detail, grace, and good humor. And whereas you have surpassed 
all of the aspirations for this momentous effort with unparalleled discipline and solid judgment. And whereas this community has enjoyed the full measure of your leadership in this consequential effort of generational significance. Now therefore we, Paul K. Healy, Marianne Power, and Karen A. Johnson, Selectman of Hingham, proclaim our heartfelt gratitude, appreciation, and thanks for all you have done on our behalf and extend to you and your family a sincere well done on behalf of the town of Payne. Signed the 16th day of April, 2019, Paul K. Healy, Marion Power, Karen A. Jones. Thank you uh, very much, everyone. Uh, I know, Paul, this is your last go around as selectman, and uh, you're going to go home and uh, get your fishing rod all oiled up and ready to go. <laughs> However, it's not enough just to say thank you, Paul. So I have 72 pages of stuff here. <laughs> it's not enough to say thank you, but I'll try, okay? Thank you for all your years of service to the town of Hingham on the planning board and selectman, okay? You have provided leadership with integrity and fairness always with the town of Hingham in your heart. I personally thank you for your good counsel. You have made Hingham a better place to live, okay? I know it's a honeydew list ahead, but best of luck, and thank you so much, Paul. Thank you. Joseph Beerworth, who couldn't uh, join us tonight, is also going to receive a similar uh, proclamation with our thanks. Uh, Joe is, is part of this committee and, and uh, works so well with this team. So, thank you, gentlemen. Thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 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 item on the agenda is discussion of proposed modifications to the right-of-way and sidewalk closure related to 6th Station Street. Uh, do we have somebody here for that? Susan, you want to come? Here. Council? Yes, I'm Richard Henderson, representing Mr. Nye and his landscape architect, Sean Papich. In my letter, uh, which I wrote on January 22nd, I outlined um, four objectives of work to be done in the right of way consisting of installation of brick sidewalks, landscaping and shrubbery, uh, handicap ramps, resetting of a certain amount of curbing and um, uh, a controversial somewhere to be placed bike rack which will be decided in the future. So rather than elaborating further as I didn't let her, I think I'll let Sean go over the plan and he can explain in detail what the objectives are. Thank you. No, you can. No, that's not a portable one. I'll try to do it from okay. I'm Sean Pappage, Sean Pappage Landscape Architecture, 222 North Street in Hingham. So the improvements and the modifications that are looking, uh, we're looking to make as a part of the project at Six Station Street. That on, uh, you do have a color rendered plan that would be helpful. We do. Yep. Big letters on it, big numbers on it. <laughs> Appreciate that. Always Appreciate that. So
And Richard had uh, wrote a letter that described each of these uh, these points that were uh, where the improvements were going to be. Um, number one was the brick walkway in the right of way. That'll be a brick walkway that matches all of uh, the other brick walkways downtown, City Hall Paver. And so you've got that wrapping up from North Street, wrapping around on Station Street, and down around to the southern part of the property. And let me know. I can point these out on the large plan at any point. I can, I can certainly do that. That's number one. Number two, inside the right-of-way as a part of this, you're going to have some lawn area as well as some shrubs. And you'll see that on kind of the top part of that drawing, top part of that page, number two. Mm -hmm. Shrubs and ground cover. Number three, you're going to have uh, architectural access board and ADA compliant ramps at a North Street and Station Street intersection as well as down on the south part of the property along Station Street on the entrance into the parking areas. So that is within the right of way. Number four on North Street, we're going to be doing new granite curbing that will be right against the street. And wrapping around onto Station Street will also be some new. And then it transitions to resetting the existing granite curb. And that's just back about a foot and a half uh, in one uh, foot and a half to two feet as you wrap around down on South or Station Street, excuse me. There's kind of elements number four, number five. And then number six is the intention to do a bike rack in front of the retail unit all along North Street on that expanded brick area. It's really almost a little courtyard in front there. And so the intent is to do a bike rack. The intent is also to talk with Public Works on the style of what that bike rack needs to be. You see uh, not many bike racks in downtown. You see a couple different styles, some fixed, some that are movable. And I'm not sure either one that's downtown is actually very good, to be honest. So it might be a third one. Probably going to get myself into trouble saying that. <laughs> Won't be the first time. You want me to point those out on the plan if it's easier or if you can tell from the drawing? Yeah, I thought um, I think it's fairly clear. clear. Clearly more helpful yeah. to have the numbers. Okay, good. If you had any other questions about the specific work on the Questions from my colleagues. Just, um, Sean, landscape maintenance, is that going to be a sort of a regular part of the, of the building, kind of building maintenance? We'll be taking care of the? Yeah. Okay. Yes, we'll You're not going to let the uh, ivy grow in the interior of the? Uh, that's right. <laughs> no, no, that's right. Something new. It's an interesting Something feature. New. I don't know if it was intentional, <laughs> but it was interesting. <laughs> And the um, Public Works uh, Tree and Park will be consulted on the nature of the shrubs and things so that, you know, they're comfortable with sight lines, everything else. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we're really having an issue with any of the sight yep. distance that we're dealing with. We went through that when we were going through everything with, with uh, zoning. Okay. With planning board, I think we're in pretty good shape with the sight distance triangles. Great. I mentioned in my opening that the whole zoning and planning Okay, that's what, yeah. Thank you. Everything is staying pretty low at those intersections with the parking yep. lot and certainly along North and Station Street. Yep. Thank you. Is there yep. something you'd like to add? Yep. So um, Tom had asked me to just uh, consolidate the various board staff comments. Um, so that involves um, the planning board had submitted some comments. Um, they had just reserved in their permit that these improvements were subject to approvals because anything inside the right of way is on the planning board's purview. Um, so I got uh, there was a letter that had been submitted by Gordon Carr that was supplemented by an email by Barry Savage Dunham. Um, I spoke at length to um, Randy Sylvester. Uh, Chief Olson also had some comments not about these improvements but about 
the sidewalk closure, which is the second half of what you're discussing tonight. Um, and then uh, Roger Fernandez, who had been tied up last week, contacted me today to talk about uh, street lights. Um, and he had he had thought because he I think he had talked to someone on the development team maybe a few months ago. He he had thought that they were incorporated, but they weren't called out um, in the letter or on the plan. Um, so we had mentioned it to Mr. Falconeri um, tonight. I, you know, he hasn't had a lot of time to respond to that. I, I just have a question, um, Sean, since you're here, uh, and Tom actually caught this. I confess I didn't. Uh, near on the ramp, right? Well, it's not on this plan, but on the plan that you emailed to us, there's there were little white circles, and we don't know was that intended to be. I don't know. Can you take like Tom, Tom caught them. I don't know. Were these intended to be street lamps, maybe? Because they were on the plan that got submitted for tonight, yeah, but they're no, not labeled. No. No, they're not. They could have okay. been a graphic that was on the. Okay. Uh, All right. Could have been a graphic that was, that was on the engineer's plan um, carried so, through on ours. So Roger Fernandez mentioned that if if the town, if this was part of the town project, the, they would not have this long a stretch of sidewalk without any street lamps. Um, I asked him how many he thought would be necessary. He said, you know, a minimum two, but I mean, he was comfortable with two. Um, street only or is that yeah. No, I think the placement would have to be determined by DPW at the time. Um, so because they're not pointed out here, I, I think, you know, I'm not exactly sure. I don't want to speak for DPW. Um, but I'm sorry, Susan, are you saying that's a condition of the plan? Well, or no, well, so this is not, this was not raised in the it's materials in the right that you received okay. for tonight's meeting. Um, but it is a recommendation that came from Roger today. So okay. uh, we apologize for the last insertion of that comment, uh, the last minute insertion. Um, but if for the, for the town to have this long a stretch without street lamps, it would not be consistent with the lighting and pedestrian safety in the downtown. Um, and once the bricks put in, nobody's going to want to be ripping it up at that point. Right. Um, so, you know, Roger has had asked that that be discussed tonight as a potential, uh, potential addition to the work. And now we're putting the applicant on the on the spot here, but um, I don't know if you're can res if they're ready. Well, to one thing to I'd that. just like to add to that is, you know, as we talked about this project, at least up at, at our level, and I've talked with each of you individually at different points about this project and proposed projects on this site in the past, is that you know one important nature of the of the proper development on this site is the economic uh, tie-in from the harbor to the square. And this is a this is a linchpin property, so we want to make sure that, in my opinion, that it be well lit and accessible from the harbor to the square, which had always been, I think, a big part of the consideration. And frankly, I think that if streetlights wouldn't come up and that parcel were developed, we would hear from residents and patrons who might uh, ask. Agreed. Okay. I tend to think that um, you know on North Street it. It's obvious with respect to the need and, and perhaps the the hook on Station Street can you know, it, the applicant can certainly uh, have some kind of lighting that perhaps is attached to the building that might illuminate the sidewalks without a, for any additional expense. Well, I, I just say that the I think there is a condition design. yeah there's a condition related to the site plan for a photometric plan okay. but I think Paul as you may be aware the planning board seeks with its photometric plans to make sure that the lighting stays on the it site doesn't and doesn't right. spill. So I think that the intention on the planning board site was that any of the lighting on the building would be, you know, the shaded lights that were interior to the site. Um, so that wouldn't necessarily address the pedestrian issue. Okay. And is there access, is, it, is there access to electrical um, you know, through conduit, is there access in the right of way to? to well, be able what to Roger that? told me tonight is that it would have to be brought from wherever the last light is on North Street. It would it would be extended through conduit underground. Yeah, that, the whole, that whole area is underground. Yeah. Okay, 
So are, I guess are we talking about digging up stuff that's outside this property in order to bring bring the electrical connection to the property? I I can't answer that question. Okay. I mean I, I don't know if you think it's a big a big deal for you. I think it's a big deal for us that we get some lighting ar around the project. I think it's an important element. I, I think there might be some question um, that I would have, and it's not uh, it's it's. I'm not privy to the information as much as maybe some of the other folks on the project team would be is the responsibility of that lighting or bringing the power to those lights. So if there was already a sidewalk in existence today as there is, it's not in great shape. Most of that property is not in great shape, but what's in the public right of way right now still has walkway if I'm not mistaken. Should there not have already been a street light there for that connection and to what degree and we even have, haven't had this conversation. This is coming just from me alone uh, because we just heard about it tonight. And it's, uh, is what responsibility is that uh, for the property owner, in this case, Matthew, or uh, responsibilities that are shared with Public Works would be the question mm -hmm. I would have. Yeah, no, I That's don't, more for private right, yeah, information. I don't know the answer to that. Yep. Right. What Roger did say to me is that part of the reason why this has been left the way it is is because for the last few years there was always a there was going to be a project happening and for the town to put all that work into the perimeter and then potentially have it have to be pulled up for to bring in utilities or other construction related to the site so the town did not put in those improvements because they were waiting on a project they didn't know it would be your project but they were waiting on a project that kept being you know floated for this site and so for the if the town had put in the full sidewalk all of those um you know the lights everything else and then a, a developer came in to do it it might have kind of ended up ripping up or damaging a lot of that anyway so they they did not do it at when the rest of the uh, north street was done and that's why they're not there now You're the yes, guy. Mr. You're the Falconeri, guy. What, what, what's so, your view? So I agree with the sidewalks need to be done, and, and whether the town was intending on doing that and just how long they're waiting. I mean, we're we're fully accepting of of that cost and doing that work to improve that whole corner. Perfect. Um, street lights are, are sort of false. Um, but we're just letting the you know where that condo goes and can do that to get involved in it, and that's that's a little bit more involved. Yeah, and I guess I, lights. yeah, no, I know he needs he lights. Need lights. Yeah. He needs lights, but one one question I guess I have is whose responsibility would it would it be to make sure that he can get the electrical hookup, not a technical term, to his property line? Like, is that on us? Isn't it? it doesn't the light company have some kind of power box in the corner there, anyways? It is. It, it's a transformer, but I don't think they would pull off of that. So Roger's saying pulling off the last, right. Because mm -hmm. I mean, well, well whatever. I I'm want to pull back on in terms of a vote here until that question's sorted out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the problem is the timing, what, what your timing is, because we don't, we have town meeting, right? I don't know when our next meeting is after that. That's the, that would be the question. Building was held up because one of the last issues was the permission from this board to do the landscaping and brickwork on the tunnel cab. And I don't know what happened, but it actually, Mr. Clancy wouldn't get the building permit without your permission to do the work, and it got delayed for six to ten months. And so I, I hate to keep. Off well, I the tunnel cap—I mean, the tunnel cap is his own world, right? <laughs> like this is this is a little. I, I hear you, but this is a little different. A lot of that was M B. Yeah, some of that, yeah. My, my recollection on the board was that that you that there was some approval needed from the M B T A that was well, outside yeah. of, yeah, kind of outside of this process. It was, sure. It was an impediment I have an idea. That might work uh, if you guys wanted to consider it. Um, and obviously, Matt, you're, <laughs> you, you would have to consent to the idea. Uh, so part of my concern is that the DPW and engineering don't have an appropriation, obviously. was This, this kind of work wasn't considered in their budget. But 
I've been I talked to Roger tonight to get a sense of what the cost would be for these two street lights if needed and he was saying they were a couple of grand a piece uh, plus whatever tie-in work was necessary the conduit and the, and the, um, the the, the electrical work for connecting them. I'm just wondering if maybe a, uh, an, a pr we can come to an agreeable uh, condition on a cost not to exceed for that effort, and then the town could pick up the difference. He picks up what what works towards that goal. Call it you know six thousand dollars or something. Two two for the lights, and then figure two to connect. That might be sufficient. And then if it's another thousand dollars or two thousand dollars, then the town would pay that balance if that works for you guys I, just an idea if, if that works with you and my colleagues are happy with it we don't want to hold yeah. the project I, up for sure because otherwise I, my fear Matt would be otherwise the delays that might occur as a result and I know that's Agreed. what you don't want but I'm also recognizing that this is a last second curveball for Matt and that's not how we normally do things so um, an amount not to exceed and then if it were to ex exceed that amount the town would step in right there you go. Right. Okay. It's for two lights. It's not. No, no. no. I'm, I'm just. Yeah. Trying to, no, yeah. No. Understood. Yeah. 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 Um, I guess I, I would just want to. I'm assuming you would have some conversation with Roger after this, and. Yeah, but they're going to have their own cut sheets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we have to get them all approved and everything. There'll be a process between the two. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And, and Susan, um, putting these lights now in the project doesn't disturb any of the prior board's approvals, right? Like. No, so the, what they're referring to on the delay and as far as getting building permits and that type of thing is the planning board site plan review approval has a condition that it's subject to them receiving all the necessary approvals for, for this. So they don't need to go back to the board because that's anything that's in the right of way is within the Board of Selectmen's purview, okay. but they have to satisfy the condition of having the approval in whatever form the Selectmen elect to give it um, in order for them to proceed with the project. Um, it, my numbering's off here as it is. Um, Item six. Yeah. Well, I, I would probably, it, the numbering's off anyway, I just realized there's two number fours. It would probably be number four and then we would change the numbers sequentially after that to five, six, seven. Okay. Um, so you're gonna you'll, you'll propose some language. Yeah, I mean. While we're doing that, does anybody from the audience want to say anything? Okay. Oh, oh, Mr. Watson has a question. Don't be careful. <laughs> no, I've just been very impressed. That's all fine. Oh, hey, Jim Watson, 291 Rockland Street. I've just been very impressed lately with all the new lights in the square that have the period style but are opaque at the top, so they shine only down, right. you know, avoiding a light sky. And I'm just assuming that the project will have the same design lights. We anticipate that that will be emulated. Same thing, like the other ones. Right. Good. Thank you. Is that a different way? Just, just say while well, Council's working on this language, you know, I think we have a shared interest in wanting this project to get going. And um, I appreciate the cooperative way that we're kind of working together on this. And, you know, Mr. Falconeri, I just want to take the opportunity to tell you that the Lincoln Building looks beautiful. beautiful. Really beautiful. And, you know, uh, every time I'm driving into the square, I'm in the square with people. Um, I've heard nothing but, um, but good things about the building. And um, we know that there were a lot of challenges with that. And, again, we had to work in a cooperative manner on sidewalks and dumpsters and you know other things like that so we look forward to an equally successful project at um at six station street and so do we are we talking about the sidewalk closure in connection with this as well yeah well yeah so that's a separate okay. discussion and a separate vote vote okay um so i'll let you finish writing that yeah it'll take me but one as she one finishes that well just to piggyback on what mary said you know i had the opportunity to walk down there with michelle the other day and it's not just the building mat it's the uh the the cap out back is it's been reclaimed it's usable again um you know that was in that was in poor condition for quite a while and um it just looks beautiful it really does yeah yeah it is it's nice to see a responsive developer Cool. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> okay, Keep it at that end of the yeah, table, yeah, please. I just read one of those, I just read one of those uh, proclamations. No. Yeah, right, 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 you know. Karen recognizes those kind of edits running exactly. down the side. Yeah, yeah, right. uh, well, the lawyer's going to have to do would this. Would you like a motion? I would. <laughs> well, I got one for you. All right. Uh, I move that pursuant to Hingham General Bylaws Article 10, the board approves certain improvements within the right of way of North Street and Station Street as described in the letter of Attorney Richard Henderson dated January 23, 2019, an annotated preliminary landscape plan revised March 6, 2019 by Sean Papich, the improvements subject to the following conditions. Number one, the brick walkway and vertical granite curbing modifications number one, four, and five shall be installed with town approved materials and to town standards. Number two, AAB, AAD, ADA compliant ramps shall be constructed in accordance with applicable accessibility laws and regulations. Number three, the type and location of the proposed bike rack shall be subject to approval by the Department of Public Works prior to installation. Number four, the improvements shall include the installation of two street lamps consistent with town materials and standards provided that the cost to the applicant shall not exceed $6,000. Within the, with, it, with the remainder of such costs to be borne by the town, if any. Number five, the improvements shall be subject to the inspection by and approval of the Board of Selectmen or its designee, except as expressly provided herein with respect to the landscaped areas as herein defined. Upon the town's written approval of the improvements, the improvements shall become the responsibility of the town. Number six, Approval of the installation of the landscaped areas in the right-of-way modification number two, the landscaped areas shall constitute a revocable non-exclusive license and shall not be deemed to confer easement rights or any other right or interest in, in the right-of-way. The landscaped areas shall be maintained by the owner of Six Station Street, its successors and assigns, where am I, the owner, in a neat and presentable manner. This license is revocable by the town in whole or in part at any time with or without cause upon written notice to the owner. Upon such revocation, the area of the right-of-way comprised of the landscaped areas shall, to the extent of the revocation, become the responsibility of the town and may be modified by the town in the town's sole discretion. Number seven, the town shall not be responsible or liable for any damage to the property or injury to persons arising from the claim of any person during the installation of the improvements. By undertaking the improvements, the owner shall be deemed to have agreed to indemnify and hold the town harmless with respect to any costs or damages, including without limitation, the town's cost of enforcement enforcement of this license and reasonable attorney attorney's fees and costs arising from the claim of any person alleging personal injury or damage to property as a result of a the installation or condition of the improvements prior to the town's approval thereof and b the condition of the landscaped areas within the maintenance with the maintenance the landscaped the condition of the landscaped areas with the maintenance the landscaped areas oh. so long as the license remains in effect Second. Something's missing. Discussion. Hearing enough. none. All those in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Next. Closure. Sidewalk. Sidewalk. Good we job. Need to do, do something with that? Um, the sidewalk closure? No, the uh, that last sentence. Yeah, Did we I? do. Okay. Um, the condition. My condition is it? We could maybe do it as oh i think it's with respect to the maintenance with respect to the maintenance of the landscaped areas it's so the the idea here is on the hardscape once it's done it's the t and it's been approved by the town it's the towns yep the landscape area randy's concern was grass needs to be taken care of right. and that's not something dpw want to be responsible for right they have expressed interest in maintaining that um area so um so the indemnification language goes to the installation of the improvements at the time they're happening so someone gets injured while that's being installed yep. and b goes to the condition of the landscaped areas if someone says you know they didn't maintain that and I trip and fell and they and someone sues the town for tripping and falling on the grass, then that would be so it, it's going to So you, you we just need with respect to the maintenance maintenance of, of the, landscape the landscape areas. So Sally, can you uh, we'll give you this line. I'll give you I mark I just She's I just marked I just it. marked it, so I'll give it I'll give you the correction. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Yep. Okay. okay so that that was the next piece of it is the is the um, sidewalk closure and there's a set of three plans that you all received 
The first one shows the fence within, this is phase one, shows the fence within the property line, so there's no relief needed there. The second one um, is a, a partial, a partial closure of the sidewalk on the North Street side, and you can see that the kind of there's a long dash line that's skinny, and then there's the fatter, shorter dash line. That's the fence. So it's just outside the property line. Um, that's proposed for a, over a year, about 13 or so months, six weeks, and then 52 <clears throat> weeks. Um, so that's a little over a year, and then. The final phase four on the last page, this is all the work uh, you all just been talking about, which would require a temporary full closure of the sidewalk. And so the recommendation, there's a recommenda recommended vote um, with respect to the kind of the, the less intensive sidewalk closure with some conditions, but then there's a condition that they return to the Board of Selectmen before the full sidewalk closure because that's going to take a lot more but pedestrian coordination, that type of thing. That's what I was going to say. Because like we, we almost need to cross people, right? Right, like, because there's a, there's a crosswalk right before the Station Street, but if people need to cross here and then they need to get back over, yeah. there's no crosswalk. Yeah. So I think that's going to require more coordination with the uh, police department and DPW. Yeah. And it's over a year away. So the thought was that prior to commencement of phase four, the applicant would come back to work on the logistics with police beforehand. You have a better sense of your timing and yeah. Yeah. all that stuff. Makes yeah. sense. It yeah. might be sooner or it might be yep. a little Right. Yeah. Yep. So the, the one open point is it has here four weeks and then 52 weeks. Um, so there's a, in the proposed vote that you have in front of you, there's a bracket right now. Um, when, when a similar vote was taken for the Lincoln Building, um, the, com the time that commenced for this temp the closure was um, issuance of a building permit, kind of as the trigger to start the period running. Um, and so that's been proposed if that works. Um, but then the length, whether the board wanted to say for a certain number of months or if you wanted to put in a date certain after which the applicant would have to come, come back, back to extend <clears throat> it beyond that. But I mean, they are proposing here about 13 and a half months. 62 weeks? Is that right? Yeah, it's 58, 58 weeks for phase two and three. Okay. Um, so I don't. I don't know. However, the board wants to. So they don't need the our blanket. approval for not phase for one. phase one, Got right? It. Okay. okay. Motion. Well, well do you, we well, need a, we need a time date. frame. I don't know if you want a date or a number of months from the date on the issuance of the. So, um, have you? Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, I get. I mean, maybe this is all just preliminary, but. It, I think as as phase two and three come along, we're going to want to make sure that the downtown merchants on that end of North Street in particular, that could be you know affected by pedestrian traffic along there, just know that this is going on and understand the timing and all of that stuff. You know, similar to the square, I think we just wanted to make sure everybody had a clear understanding of when stuff was going to close down and how people were going to access. And does that does this? Um, <coughs> Would phase two or three affect any parking or no? Because it's all. No, it's really all contained within these hash lines. Okay. Right. And so what Randy had asked for, um, and it's a condition to the vote, that during this period, um, that four feet of width be left on the sidewalk. So the fence is not all the way to the edge of the sidewalk. There's, okay. you can see the arrows yeah, yeah, going yeah. back so and forth. Can go. Okay. And Randy, um, thought it's pretty wide there, the sidewalk. It's much wider than anywhere else on North Street. Um, he thought um, four feet would give them enough room to be into the sidewalk, but enough room for to meet um, accessibility. So someone on a wheelchair could still get by on the sidewalk, even with the fence partially on the sidewalk. Okay. And if the date, the, the date that commences the period would start the period with respect to phase one as well, or so. So they pulled a building permit. 
Right. They're going to start working on the phase one piece of this. That's going to take a month, unless I'm misunderstanding this. So they're a month in, and then they, then they need an additional um, 58 weeks. But it's still, it's still commencing. That, that's that's that, accurate. Yep. So, so basically, we get a permit, we start shortly thereafter, and those first, I'm anticipating roughly four weeks, to demolish the existing structure and, and prep the site. Yep. Um, all of which is not impacting any of the south yep. whatsoever, as well on our property. And then starting at the beginning of phase two, we have to, in order to get our foundation in, we have to move it to the existing sidewalk, but as Susan said, at no point will we ever um, completely close that. Impede, you know, we'll, we'll preserve 48 inches or better. Okay. At all times. Okay. Um, until the time comes to zip all of those sidewalk structures we can certainly make yep. sure. At a point unknown at this point. Yep. So. I just want to make sure if the building pulling the building permit starts the clock that we're whatever date we right. set accommodates that month right. where they Which would include phase one, I think. Right. So it's more like sixty two weeks in total. Like in terms of setting that date out. Do you know months. what I'm saying? Yeah. You want to fifteen months would build in an extra two weeks of leeway. So if you just said 15 months from the date of the the issuance of the building permit, that gives them that the extra two weeks. Yeah, to I mean, I guess back I guess where I, I'm coming from on this is, you know, had we not had the experience we had with you before, I would be a little less confident in granting you this 15 months. But I also feel like if we had some questions, you'd come back and talk to us. And mm -hmm. um, so I don't, I don't know. I'm what right. You, I'm right with you. Yeah. I. You're you're in meeting rooms a lot, so uh, <laughs> we know where to know. We know where to find you. I would I would say that um, the cooperation and trust that that we've established with one another is, I think, giving the board confidence to to do this for 15 months. Because otherwise, it's a long you know, it's a long time, right? Okay. I don't have anything to add to that. Motion? <laughs> Please. I'll make a motion that pursuant to Hingham General Bylaws Article 10. The board approved the request of Falconary Construction to close a portion of the public sidewalk with the public way of North Street directly abutting the property at 6 Station Street as shown on the plan, site phasing plan, phase 2 and 3 construction plan dated January 8, 2019, prepared by Strzokolowski Architecture, Inc. for a period commencing as of the date of issuance of the building permit for this property and continuing for 15 months subject to the following conditions. One, a minimum width of four feet shall be maintained between the fence and the curb along North Street. Two, an extension of the extent of sidewalk closure or the period of sidewalk closure shall be, sh shall be subject to further approval by the Board of Selectmen. Three, all dumpsters, construction materials, and construction vehicles shall be located within the fenced area on the site and not permitted within any public right-of-way or the Station Street parking lot. And number four, all construction worker vehicles shall be restricted to the striped parking spaces along the railroad right-of-way in the Station Street parking lot. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I'll, I'll just note one last thing that was in your notes, but it's not, not something that the board has to take action on. There were a number of recommendations with respect to dealing with traffic calming issues, potentially a parking space on North Street that came out of the planning board review process and the peer review process uh, with Jeff Dirk. Um, and in talking to Randy, his recommendation is that all of those recommendations uh, for review be referred to the traffic committee and the traffic committee can if they think anything should happen could refer it to the board of selectmen for action so that that was Makes the sense. last piece of it thank you and Susan I just wanted to thank you for coordinating with, uh, with Roger and, and Randy because I think that the conditions in the vote anticipate much of what we would have been asking for so I, I I think it was helpful to have this all organized like this and made for a, a much more efficient uh, use of everyone's time. So mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> thank you for coming in. Appreciate it. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Let me see some things off a little bit. Maybe you can take Senator O'Connor and Representative Machino and Hot Water. I'd like them to join us at the table here. Okay. See the here. Uh, be so kind Thanks, to join us for our annual legislative update. Senator? Welcome, lady, gentlemen. Good evening. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. We have a, a couple passouts here. Um, just pass them down. Uh, as always, thank you for the opportunity to come and address uh, the board. We wanted to just provide you as the budget process is really kicking into high gear with the governor's budget out and the house budget coming out uh, a week, week or so ago. Um, you know, we wanted to kind of give an update in regards to where we are uh, at the state level. Just for opening sort of statements, I think that the state's in really good shape uh, financially. And the thing that we try to do the most is invest in our communities. I think that, that as both former local elected officials, myself and Representative Moschino, we take that as one of our biggest financial priorities is to make sure that we send as much revenue back to the cities and towns that we represent as we possibly can because we know that uh, when it comes down to it where the rubber meets the road is at the local level and that's where you actually see those dollars that you pay in state income tax, the state sales tax um, and that we get from the federal government start to actually uh, trickle down and make real impacts in people's lives whether it be at the foundation of K through 12 education, our roads, our public safety, uh, these are the things that really matter to both of us and we wanted to make sure that our budget basically starts with that foundation that our communities are as strong as they possibly can and confidently I can say in the two budgets that we've seen so far and the Senate budget due out next month that these that these do that. Um, the budget overall we took a very conservative approach only increases one and a half percent uh, from previous fiscal year so from 19 to 20 but there's as w was we'll get into the presentation there's uh, more than that in increases to our uh, to our local communities so I'll pass it over to Representative Moschino my partner in government and we uh, know that uh, Representative Murphy who wanted to be here tonight um, uh, couldn't be uh, he had some family obligations but he does send uh, obviously his support for all the work that is being done here in Hingham and uh, Representative Moschino uh, oh. Oh, that's all right. Don't break it. There you go. <laughs> Don't break it. <laughs> uh, no, I, I just also wanted to say uh, it's always good to be here. It's always good to be with our selectmen and our select women, um, especially a town that is so well run. And it's a pleasure to work with each and every one of you and um, with all of the town staff. Um, so we are in full budget mode on the House side. Uh, the budget came out last Wednesday. Um, we filed uh, a series of amendments, I think, with something like. It's a crazy amount, like 1,500 amendments, um, all looking at the various components of, uh, of the budget and where to add things in and to bring things up into what we consider to be balanced. But I have to say that in looking at um, the House's pass on the budget, it's really, and, and I would say this was the case last year with the budget as well, is that it's very much focused on people and services, um, really getting the money back into the towns, um, really enabling, enabling through local aid to really do the work of the communities. Um, and I think you saw that across the budget um, last session um, for both the House and the Senate, and you'll see that, I think, again um, this way. Um, right now, uh, I would say that I would agree that we've taken a very conservative approach towards the consensus revenue figure. Um, that's done early, or actually it's done at the end of the year last year, and I think that it's a good number, and you'll see us um, sticking very closely to that. Uh, it represents a modest increase, it tracks with the kinds of revenues that we've seen coming in, and uh, I'm sure you saw in the paper that the House has excluded what they consider to be some of the more controversial um, things like the gaming, um, because it, for us it's important um, that when we put that budget out that it be grounded, it be real, and um, that we not subject the communities to 9C cuts if, if we don't need to, that it really be something that you can rely on. Yeah, 
Just getting past the um, the first slide, the, the second one just basically outlines the budget schedule at the state level where the governor's budget comes out basically right at the start of the new year in January. House budget, as Representative Moschino said, comes out in April. The Senate budget's due out probably sometime the middle of May with budget debate to go on uh, the week after that. And then as we consolidate the two budgets, three members of the House and three members of the Senate get together and hash out all the differences between basically the three budgets that we have and we hope to have an operating budget signed by July 1 in order to go into effect. So there have been some, just to give a little recap um, from past budgets, um, we were able to secure for Hingham uh, 111000 for uh, emergency response coordination, 40000 for a multipurpose tractor, sidewalk snow removal, 20000 for safety upgrades for Hingham Public Schools, 50000 for structural repairs at Whitney Wharf. And those are just some examples of some of the things that we're able, in addition to the local aid, um, to be able to bring back down um, to the, the districts um, each year. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things that these are basically earmarks, for, for lack of a better term. But we always reach out to local communities and say, how can we help? Uh, we know that there are budgets with fixed costs and uh, pension liability and health insurance and everything else that you have to deal with inside of making up and constructing the budget that you have to work with. We know that there are some capital items that may say, oh, we'll wait till next year. And what we try and do is fill that void and say, oh, well, how about, you know, we can try and see if we can get some money from the state. And they're never going to be, in my opinion, you know, really huge big ticket items that uh, will come from the budget specifically to communities, but they're the things that, in my opinion, matter and would have to have spent town resources on, um, you know, down the line. So we try and uh, expedite that process and take some of the burden uh, financially off the community. And I think one of the things we've noticed is that um, with uh, with the, the, the changing up, at least on the House side of, of um, the chairman of House Ways and Means, they're really um, looking to if there's an item that really should be going through a grant program. It's the pref strong preference of the administration to have you apply through that way. So these are the kinds of things that really reflect, I don't want to say one-offs, but really those small items that's hard for you to make space for in your budget <coughs> uh, because you have a lot of pressing demands as well. Uh, and so they're really meant to be those either seed money for grant things or um, you know those, those things that don't always, that are needed but don't always get that priority. Um, so towards this end, um, uh, I, after speaking to your town manager, we did put in $100,000 for planning, equipment purchases, staff training to enhance the safety of the municipal buildings, um, uh, including town hall, DPW, other, other, other buildings. Um, and then um, the senator will also include one on the Senate side. Yes, and uh, we, right now uh, the earmark that we're looking to secure is the $122,000 for Hingham Public Schools to upgrade and expand security features. But there's actually a grant round that just closed, a $7 million grant round with the Department of Public Safety that we uh, worked with the community and applied for. Four out of the eight communities that I uh, represent were able to apply for this. And the last time we talked to Secretary Pizer and the Secretary and the Education Secretary, and he had uh, mentioned that he believes that there was only around $8 million of applications that were sent in. So the, the odds are looking very good that, um, that this would be something that comes across. And there's also, uh, to this end, so if that would happen, then and the, the, the grants will be announced prior to the Senate budget, we can then reassess and hopefully uh, tackle you know, something else. But one of the other things is that uh, school safety is going to be a, a major priority of the administration, as well as it should be. And uh, there's already conversations inside of the governor's budget in particular of $30 million over the next three years through sales tax modernization uh, to be used specifically for one-time expenditures on upgrading security at schools and also increasing uh, training of personnel and uh, law enforcement as well. So there's, a, there's a going to be, in my opinion, uh, many bites of the apple when it comes to improving school safety in Hingham. One thing to just be aware of is, I, I don't know if it affects it, but our buses are leased. So I don't, I don't quite know how that mm -hmm. potentially affects any sort of um, uh, security upgrades to the assets themselves. Um, John Ferris will be a good person to help on that. Yeah, and when we dealt with that in Cohasset too, where they leased their buses as well, and a lot of it's now these 360 cameras uh, in the buses that are 
uh, sort of what communities want to mm -hmm. have seeing their buses that uh, monitor everything. So we'll definitely look into see what the um, sort of how we can didn't know if contractually there were any any extra you know levels of approval or any any extra complexities yeah it makes sense that's a good point so, um, so always um, unrestricted um, aid is always a number one priority at, um, and so this year we've seen um, true to form an increase um, over last year um, globally, it's 29 million, um, but for Hingham, um, we included on the slide um, that we're looking at um, $44,000 increase. So it's really about 2.7% um, over last year for the unrestricted funding. So that's a good, that's a nice number to have come in um, and to be able to rely on um, as you're moving forward. And then Chapter 90, uh, nothing new with this. The only time that we saw the increase was the first year the governor came in with a $300 million. Uh, Representative Moschino and I have been full-fledged advocates <laughs> of increasing this number every single time that this comes about. Um, but I think that this goes with sort of the cautious approach the administration has taken with the budget that, um, you know, an extra 100 or $200 million in Chapter 90 money would obviously go a long way in our communities, mm -hmm. but would also hit the budget a little bit too much uh, for their liking. So Thanks. we stand firm at $200 million. There was a hearing in March. The Joint Committee on Transportation had it. Uh, on the 10th of April, it was reported out favorably. <coughs> now it goes to uh, House bonding, and basically that would mean that uh, based on the formula they used, Hingham would receive uh, approximately uh, seven hundred and uh, sixty-three thousand five hundred and twelve dollars uh, to use on on public roadways. And uh, as always, we're very mindful of the fact that that money in your hands sooner than later is always beneficial, so that you can jump straight to your paving projects. Um, the I would just it'll go through the process. Um, I would expect last year it came to the House floor during Budget Week, um, so. I would expect we'll see that happen pretty expeditiously. It's it's obviously not controversial, so although everyone does wish it were more, but um, so you should see that come um, pretty quickly. And then of course um, the other big one is Chapter 70, which is the school funding. Um, the so in the governor's budget right now um, is basically 5.1 billion dollars. It's about 200 million dollars increase over last year's levels. Um, the aid is calculated based on a $20 um, increase to the per pupil. Um, the House obviously um, had some increased funding as well in there, um, so the, the number is looking to be slightly more, um, and the House included a $30 per pupil um, increase. Um, Josh Cutler, our representative colleague to the South, has also filed an amendment to increase it to $50, um, I, I think we'll see it be stay at least in the house budget at 30 but but we are in there trying to get a little bit more um, to come to you um, I will just well I was gonna say the number um, sorry, let me flip over. Um, we did include the, the uh, under the governor's budget um, it would be about a two hundred thousand dollar increase to hang them um, obviously Chapter 70 is under discussion for the foundation formula review. Um, so you will, there is a series of bills um, that you'll see. So the governor put out his proposal, the, um, the House has a proposal, the Senate has a proposal, and they all um, are focused on each of the components, but they treat them somewhat differently. Um, so under different uh, proposals, you will see some different um, budget scenarios coming out in terms of aid. Um, but I think the, the message, the takeaway message, is that um, both the House and Senate are committed to finding, a, to, to finding a way to fund that. You've already seen some of the money coming um, through the last budget and through the governor's budget and through the House budget relative to um, offsets for health insurance, uh, both for current teachers and retirees. Um, I think that's probably one of the bigger um, nuts for us on, on our side, but uh, at a minimum uh, under the House budget, uh, excuse me, under the, um, under the um, governor's budget, I mean, I think you can count on at a minimum this cycle as that legislation and the formula discussions develop. 
Yeah, and, and, and education reform is definitely happening. Um, okay. It's just everyone's at the table right now. The governor has a proposal out there. Uh, the Senate and the House uh, basically agreed uh, to move it forward last legislative session. It uh, got stalled in conference committee. I was actually one of the conferees uh, where we met for well over 40 hours, uh, basically in the waning days of the legislative session to try and come up with a solution for this. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't to be had. But basically, that the, the message out of that was this next legislative session, we are absolutely going to reform mm -hmm. education. And it's in four components, four kind of buckets. Um, it's health care, uh, English language learners, uh, special education, and then uh, economically disadvantaged school districts. So when we were looking at this, um, basically, they kind of put each school district into a certain decile. And um, they work back from these deciles to basically say where the appropriation the, the, the correct appropriation of, of funds should go inside of the communities who experience the most um, economically disadvantaged children. And that's going to be, in my opinion, where a lot of the conversation uh, with this is involved. I think that the other three buckets are kind of resolved, that health, health insurance we've already made a commitment to. Mm -hmm. uh, English Learners uh, has been amazing steps forward by uh, the Look Act, we were repealed basically the 2002 ballot question that mandated sheltered English immersion. And then the third part uh, was special education. I mean, obviously, that everyone wants to do as much as we possibly can, which actually leads to the next point, yep. which is circuit breaker. And we were able to get the number from uh, DESE uh, today about what the circuit breaker reimbursement for this, pa this, this current fiscal year is going to be. And it's going to be 74.2%. Uh, which is obviously just 0.8 percent below what we want it to be, uh, but that's a real uh, a real commitment, in my opinion, that the state continues to make. Whereas in some years past, in in previous administrations, even uh, this has been a number that fluctuates way too much, and this number is obviously a huge driver of what the education budget is going to be. And and that with that said, it's also an 11.2 percent increase from last year in the in the proposed budget in the House. It's a $323.9 million, uh, which is dedicated to circuit breaker. And that number fluctuates as far as once we get the bills in and once we realize the actual costs of uh, out-of-school placements. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess the only other thing, um, we included a slide here that sort of laid out the governor's um, proposal in terms of the ed education reform um, so you can get a feel for where some of the numbers fall. Um, I think that everyone, I think the House and Senate both agree that it will be something more. Um, but we wanted to give you the baseline um, for what's happening since that is an open question right now that will be debated next week at the budget um, session for the House. So, but it, it gives you a good feel for it. And I guess the only sort of thing I would say is um, we did hear from all the school committees in our district, so you should be proud, even though, you know, a lot of the focus here would say be around um, children living in poverty that are economically disadvantaged. Obviously, that's not an issue for our, our particular district, but um, all of your school committees said it doesn't matter if none of the money comes to us. We need you to do the right thing to, um, to support children in their education across the Commonwealth and for uh, equitable funding. So you should be very proud of your school district, if your school committee um, for, for weighing in in that regard. Um, Patrick mentioned, Senator mentioned, um, the open question on one of the buckets was really around um, economically disadvantaged students. Just to illuminate the, I think one of the challenges has been how to count, um, because we used to count students relative to free and reduced lunch, um, but since a lot of um, schools don't even do that now, it's just sort of open, um, there's been some, some question about how to count how many kids, and then also some discussion about what's an appropriate number. So it's just all open for debate right now, um, but the commitment is there, and that's really the, the takeaway uh, is to build it structurally into the budget um, over time. I think everyone's looking at different end dates, but 2024 or 2026 um, are usually the two dates that we talk about um, and the commitments there. So we just wanted to add that piece. And then hopefully we don't take another 26 years to revisit, help, to, to revisit education again. <laughs> um, but then that's kind of where, you know, where we're at with that. And that, that will be, in my opinion, the biggest policy issue that we deal with this legislative session um, that every district will have to tackle is 
uh, the, the implementation of new education reform, but it's primarily of uh, the financial component. Right. And then the state has to find out uh, where we also secure the new revenue uh, to, to fund this. But I, I believe that there's opportunities out there in many different uh, vehicles that, okay. uh, that, are, that are looking good. And I think that Representative said it best, whereas when you look at what the governor proposed, just as his budget always is, it's a baseline. You know, that's right. sort of the, the, the threshold, the, the low end threshold of, of where the legislature is looking. So I think even with that as a, a low end uh, baseline, when you're talking about $130 million in new foundation aid, $30 million to help municipalities cover health care costs, mm -hmm. another 13 for English learners, another 13 for economically disadvantaged, and 106 for charter schools, that's a pretty good baseline. Uh, there are some other, in my, in just in talking with some of our colleagues from other right. states, uh, there are some other states who are struggling to make ends meet, and we're talking about expanding and increasing the amount of money that we're dedicating towards education. Yeah. So it's pretty exciting. Oh, you can talk about Yeah, that. the unfunded pension liability <laughs> is one, one of my things. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to stick with the happy thoughts. Yeah, no, so, so I mean, no, and we're doing well in this. I mean, the, these uh, sort of, um, you know, OPEB and unfunded pension liability, I think, are the two biggest untalked about drivers of mm -hmm. municipal budgets and state budgets. And the state made a commitment in 1990. Uh, they weren't able to keep it, unfortunately, but we're on the right path. Whereas 1990, they thought we could pay it, pay our entire unfunded pension liability by 2028. Healthcare popped up in an increasingly uh, costly manner and uh, it was adjusted and a schedule was put into place in 2017 with pension reform at the state level. And uh, we're on pace right now to pay off our unfunded pension liability by 2036. Each year we put in 8.9 percent uh, increase. This year's budget proposes to transfer 2.84 billion uh, to our state pension fund, which marks a 240 million dollar increase over fiscal year 18. Um, so again, when you're talking about a one and a half percent increase to a 42 billion dollar budget, and you look at the investments that we make towards education, the investments that we make towards unrestricted general aid to our communities, and then our uh, investment that we're making into our liabilities, you can see that a lot of the money that, um, that we increase our budget by is caught up in those, uh, those three sort of line items. Um, but those are, in my opinion, and as well as the representatives, those are our priorities, right. whereas paying off our bills, making sure our communities are strong, and making sure that our K through 12 system is, continues to be the best in the entire, the entire country and gives all of the children of the Commonwealth an opportunity to do whatever it is they want to do, career technical education, military, two-year school, four-year school, whatever that may be, that that's our commitment uh, at, at our level, and, and we know that that's yours as well here in Hingham. Yep. It's about people investing in our communities, investing in our in people and services. Um, and we've done a, we've done a, a little bit so far, um, just on a, a local uh, basis. We've had a meeting uh, with uh, Jack McCarthy over at the uh, Mass mm -hmm. School Building Authority uh, in regards to Foster School, uh, and we know and have been advocating for that for some time now. We were disappointed uh, to see two rounds go by. Uh, we definitely don't want to see another one go by with the with the school uh, not being put on the list so uh, uh, we're, we're working diligently on trying to uh, trying to make that happen including a site visit that MSBA is going to make uh, sometime in the next few months to, to foster school which they did previously two years ago uh, but it's definitely it's definitely time for them to see you know why this is an urgent need for the community and they do recognize they recognize the need um, they recognize that it's a good project. They recognize that Hingham does it right. Um, they had only praise um, for the community, but it's the way that they run their program is, is year to year. And so you either make the threshold or they wipe the slate clean and everybody starts again. So the, the problem is, is that there's a lot of unmet need out there and you don't know who will be in the next bucket, um, who, who you'll be competitive against. Um, in the next in the next round, uh, unfortunately, costs have gone up. Projects are bigger. Once they get kind of past all of the elementary schools, some of these high schools are really big projects, um, and they don't have. It's not like libraries on a B list, um, you know, where projects come off and projects come on. It's it's within the annual cap. So um, there is um, 
a, a bill that got filed to increase um, the bond from 500 million to 750 million, which we signed on to. Um, so we'll be advocating to increase the pot of money so we're not just always fighting um, for the same money with the same communities, but really trying to increase. Again, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier, is the investments that the administration and the legislature are making in our local communities so that you can do the work you need to do and educate students. So. Well, and I, I just have to say, I, I attended that meeting on behalf of the Board of Selectmen, and uh, you know, one of the things I really appreciated was how hard both of you worked to make sure that the right people were in the room to have the conversation. And while I agree with you, Representative, that the program is what the program is, um, I think one of the takeaways for me was um, they listened to us, they heard our story, um, they, you know, there was an indication that the statement of interest that we filed is a, is a good, solid statement of interest. They understand the story of that school and the importance of that uh, building as a, uh, as a community school. Um, and I think that they recognize the support not only of the school committee but of this board in, in advancing that project and securing funding for that. And, you know, I guess again, for me, um, to be able to walk into the State House and know that the right people are in the room because both of you have advocated on behalf of this community um, is just uh, uh, beneficial to us. And, um, you know, I, I appreciate those efforts because without that, you know, it, it's hard to, hard to have your voice heard. So, you know, I think it's, it's to me just one example of that kind of work that you do behind the scenes um, to make sure that the community can advance its interests uh, at the State House. Uh, and so, you know, conversations with, with leadership across the board, you know, has been helpful. And, you know, you pointed out here, um, you know, your communication with all of us on uh, what when when uh, monies may become available, what the priorities of the town are, you know, with the three of us as well as with Tom, uh, again, you know, that, that access to our state resources and our state leadership, you know, we, we appreciate your efforts on that behalf. Absolutely. Um, so I think the only other thing we wanted to sort of add was that um, uh, we were talking earlier about the, um, the foundation review and sort of think projects, things, big initiatives that didn't get um, quite across the finish line at the end and as you know everything resets and bills get refiled again with the beginning of the new legislative session um, but we have seen the House and Senate very willing to just go right back to some of the things that didn't quite get across and we just wanted to mention a few that happened to ha come, across, come up this past month one was lifting the cap on kids um, which is the wel welfare benefits reform um, you know we think we all agree that um, what benefits go to a child shouldn't have to do with the birth order. Um, that was one lie heap, which is um, fuel assistance funding. Um, the House and Senate, um, we voted $30 million, and I did just read that uh, the administration released the first $19 million of that. So it's just an example of some of the programs um, and some of the legislative initiatives um, that have that didn't quite make it last time around. Um, and what you've seen is legislature going right back to it, having early hearings, really picking up where the discussion left off, left off in last session, and really a commitment there to um, getting good policy work done. So. Yeah, and I, and I think just to just to add on to that, again, what's different in my opinion from what we do in Massachusetts and what is done elsewhere when it comes to government is that bipartisan public policy is alive and well in Massachusetts and I think that it leads towards a really strong government where you have conversations rather than arguments and right. I really enjoy working uh, with my colleague in order to achieve not only the goals for uh, for our communities but for the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. And we're very lucky we have a good South Shore delegation that we works do. very collaboratively um, on all of our issues on our shared issues but also supporting in in our own districts so it's been it's actually been really been great. So. That's great to hear. I, um, I would I would just uh, you know say thank you for all that you do for the community um, I actually think that there's a relationship between ed reform and the unfunded pension liabilities because I think if those liabilities aren't taken care of and funded year after year um, ed reform is going to suffer because those bills are going to be mounting and you know, there's with with ed reform, there are going to be some leaps of faith that have to happen. So, if the rest of the fiscal house is in order, I, I think it makes it a little easier to make that leap. Um, to me, the the success of the ed reform is greater if everybody's pie gets a little bit bigger. 
Um, my impression in the past is that without growing the pie, there was a little bit of reluctance to tackle ed reform because there was the fear that maybe my community would end up with less money than it has right now. And so I, I, think, I think all the ingredients are in place for this to be successful and constructive. And I think that's really important because, you know, as you know, and you hear from the school committees and you hear from the superintendents, um, the number of unfunded mandates that communities face, particularly in education, is mounting. And, and I look at ed reform is, 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 you know, right now we're in sort of a deficit where for the last several years we've just been, you know, hit with one mandate after another. To me, ed reform is getting us like to the, you know, to getting us even. It's not getting us ahead. It's, it's, this is money that should have, that, that ideally the communities would have had access to as these mandates were coming up. It's catch up. And um, uh, it's, it's nice to hear the commitment and hopefully the work that was done last year sets the stage and, um, you know, hopefully it is a, uh, hopefully it's it's a it's a positive uh, a positive outcome I, I would echo too that that you know w with the MSBA I, I, I saw a thing in the paper the other day about projects that were awarded and you know th there was a high school that it's it's a 241 million dollar high school is the one I remember and you know that's that's the state paying some the community paying some it's it's a big school I'm not not suggesting it's it's you know the good thing about the MSBA is they say what do you need and you know there are there aren't a lot of bells and whistles but to your point the schools are expensive you know when when the program started and East school was funded in 2008 I think 16 16 schools were funded out of that 500 million dollars you know I was looking at the list and going wow that that one school with 241 million th there's not a lot of room for other schools and I think it's the state should be very proud of the program. Um, it's obviously drawing more interest, but um, to, to your point, in the last 11 years, the costs of building schools has increased, and so it's more competition for those funds, and, um, and I'm sure there are many other communities who are in our circumstance where we've, you know, we're applied, we're hoping, um, but I, uh, uh, to, to me, part of ed reform, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, we're sort of looking at the MSBA as well. Maybe it's not $750 million in one year, you know, maybe it's $50 million over each of the next five years or something. I think any, any, bit, any bit would help. One thing I said to my successor is uh, make sure you keep the potholes filled, and to that end, um, <laughs> I'm excited about the fact that we've submitted our design for the 3A uh, corridor to the state, so we're, we're moving along there. We appreciate any support that either one of you could give us on that. I think we were well received for the collaboration we showed with the town hall and uh, to a lesser extent Cohasset. Um, so I'm hoping that that materializes in the next couple of years. We're always happy to, uh, well, any project that you have on the tip um, as they as it goes through the design build um, process, we're always happy to either write a letter to go with you um, and advocate. And when you bring one of us with you, uh, that means you get to jump to the front of the line and present first, so keep that in mind. Good tip. <laughs> no, no, I know that's a longstanding um, public safety project for you and for the chief. Um, so. And we're happy to happy to support happy to help so anybody out. would like to question comment okay well thank you thank you very much before we go we have one uh, last item of business to take care of mm -hmm. that's, that's <laughs> you mr. chairman yeah. <laughs> you don't mind if we embarrass you just a little <laughs> Do you want to go? Uh, well, so Do you want to stand up, actually, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Over there? Or? Sure. Come on. Go to the middle.
comes on board uh, and that people do their time. And I say that as if it's some little <laughs> 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 institution. Uh, but in all seriousness, um, I think that uh, you know, your service to the town of Hingham over the years in so many different capacities. Uh, and I'm sure you're not done. I'm sure this is just a step back and that um, you will be back doing for your community in the way you have always done. And so we thought that it, since this was your last week and we happen to to be in here giving an update, uh, we, we couldn't let the moment pass um, without noting it. And so in honor of that, um, we did get citations um, from the House of Representatives um, for Paul Healy in recognition of your service on the Board of Selectmen and your continued dedication to the community of Kingdom. Um, the entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all your endeavors. And I'm sure we'll all look forward to seeing what it is next that you, <laughs> what your wife lets you next. <laughs> <laughs> These really should be for the spouses, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's signed this day by Speaker DeLeo, myself as your state representative, and Representative Jamie Murphy. We just wanted to say congratulations. Thank you so much, Jim. <laughs> Paul, we did a uh, we did a resolution. Um, you know, coming into the the Senate in the special election, uh, you've been nothing but uh, kind, and you 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 truly are a gentleman. Um, you know, and as I'll, are you. Oh, well, I appreciate that. But going to these events and going to these meetings and being able to hear you speak, um, I was really struck at one Eagle Scout recently uh, when you spoke to a gentleman who uh, helped helped out with the GAR Hall, and I think presented him a book. Um, it's those it's those little things uh, that you do that really make a tremendous impact on this community, um, as well as all the big things uh, with your fingerprints being all over this community and all these good things that have had that have happened. Um, so we we did, we did a resolution and we actually put the word retiring in it and we were told not to do that because like well you know you're going to do something else. To do. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, so we did service, but it's it's a resolution congratulating you on your public service in the town of Hingham. And it says, uh, and we had this read into the record at the, in the Massachusetts State Senate. And it says, whereas Paul K. Healy, of the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Hingham, is retiring from that job and to recognize his service of more than 41 years of public service in the Town of Hingham. And whereas Paul Healy began his service of the town in 1978 as a member of the Hingham Police Department, wherein he rose to the rank of sergeant. And whereas after serving as a police officer in the town, Paul Healy was appointed to numerous committees fine-tuning and sharing his extensive knowledge of the Hingham community. And whereas Paul Healy was first elected to the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Hingham in 2013 and serves as its chair for three years. And whereas the Board of Selectmen directly oversee the Town of Hingham's operations and governance. And whereas throughout his career in public service, Paul Healy has honorably served as a loyal steward and dedicated leader for the Town of Hingham. And on Tuesday, April 16, 2019, he will preside over his final Board of Selectmen meeting now they'll full be resolved that the Massachusetts Senate extends its heartiest congratulations to Paul K. Healy on his retirement from a distinguished career in public service to the town of Hingham and further extends to him sincere best wishes for continued success, good health and happiness, and be it further resolved that a copy of these resolutions be transmitted forthwith, signed by Karen Spilka, Senate President, and myself, State Senator Patrick O'Connor. Paul, it's been an honor to do this, and Thank I look forward Patrick. to the next one. Bruce Rebufo received this, and I really never thought this day would come, but here it is. So, um, thank you, thank you both. Very Appreciate well. that, Paul. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for that. Um, we're going to continue on. Um, next on the uh, agenda is the merchant's parking lot discussion. Nope. So, uh, so 
Michelle will probably walk you through okay. the nuts and bolts of this. Great. All right, so if I could direct your attention to the aerial map we have of Merchants Parking Lot in your packets. Um, Merchants Parking Lot is the lot that's located behind 29 Main Street. Um, and it stretches from Main Street over to Central Street. It is a private lot that's currently owned by BJ Selenko and her sister, and BJ's here with us tonight. Welcome. Um, Hi, how are you? Thank you for coming. Um, and the town's ability to use this lot as a municipal parking lot is governed by a 2002 license agreement with the owners um, that states that the town shall take custody and control of the premises for municipal parking purposes and will keep and maintain the premises for those purposes. So the town has been working for about the last year and a half or so with Ms. Selenko um, to try to develop and exec execute a plan to undertake some maintenance of the lot since no significant maintenance of the lot has been done in the last 20 years or so. So as part of that broader plan to um, do some crack sealing and place a top coat over the lot and restripe it, we've been talking with the owner and have, um, with engineering staff, developed this plan that you're looking at. Um, the request that's before the board tonight is when we undertake this restri restriping of the lot is to designate 12 sp parking spaces that sort of um, abut the edges of Ms. Selenko's building and reserve those for tenants of her building only. Um, as part of this plan last fall or in about August or so, at the owner's request, the town um, issued parking placards for the tenants, the five um, businesses that are in 29 Main Street, which would allow them to park in the lot without restrictions. They wouldn't be subject to the three hour parking limit. Um, in working with Ms. Selenko, we've been trying to balance um, the town's desire to maintain as many spaces as possible for municipal parking with um, the owner's responsibilities to provide some spaces for her tenants. Those placards that we issued replaced older placards that were issued at around in 2001, I believe, or before. <laughs> I think it was when the merchant, we had an agreement with the Merchants Association. Right, those were given to um, members of the broader Downtown Business Association. So what's happened for many years is is tenants of businesses in the general area have been parking in that lot all day and we're trying to sort of um, come up with a plan here that frees up as many spaces as possible for the public but also addresses the concerns of the owner's tenants. Um, um, first of all, I'd like to thank you very much for your generosity for allowing the town to use it as public parking. Um, you know, it's, it's something I think some people just take for granted and we yeah, don't. I think a lot of people think that we are taking something away from the town, and I'm saying, no, no, we sure. are here, but it's good for the town to think of. It's good for our tenants, and that's really good for us. Thank so you. it's got to be a win-win for everybody. But because Absolutely. of the change of the, the, change of the types of um, businesses that have come into the center of town, it's my tenants come at 8 o'clock in the morning, there's no spaces for them, and then people are there all day long. I mean, people are parking there all day and then going somewhere else. And so we have to, we have to figure, we have to figure that out. And at Chief Olson's suggestion, these 12 designated spaces would be restricted to tenant parking only during the hours of 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. daily so that folks could park there before and afterwards. Um, how has uh, has the the informal practice which are the signs that the signs that are existing has that helped those just recently very we recently went in okay up. we just put those up and, and and that's what we're kind of talking about tonight which is okay. we want to make sure that that's and these are shared they look like shared placards among the tenants that's right. so so, so we each, each yes. tenant, so we have a, a oh, number of them. They are numbers. They've been assigned to the oh. businesses, not to oh. the businesses. individual employees, to yeah, be shared among Just them. so that the, the audience at home can hear what you're saying, would you be oh, kind sure. enough just to go to the mic so we Thank can you. get the explanation Sorry. on the air? Uh, Usually have a pretty bellowing voice, most people hear. <laughs> 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 just ask my kids. And so is the idea then with formalizing <coughs> this, having placards in place that that the police could then ticket folks who are violating this that is correct so it's, we can't really do it now because it's not properly striped we don't have a kind of organized approach to it but then you'd be able to check to make sure that the people who are parking in the spot have the tenant placard is that the correct yeah. okay we want to make sure that 
The only way the center of Hingham survives is if people come to the center of Hingham to do their shopping and their businesses. If merchants are parking there all day long or if electricians are parking there, which they have been all day long, then pe there's no spaces for it people to come and go so that's that's our concern but by the same token you need your tenants to have absolutely certain yeah, yeah 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 yep. okay you know one of the things that um, I'm sure council will agree with me on this one um, when we were working on developing the shipyard and as well as South Hingham we wanted to preserve the vitality of the square and we realized how delicate it is so I can truly respect what you you're trying to accomplish here and and think that it's it's entirely reasonable so thank you appreciate that Michelle can you are, are the spots on the as you're looking at the drawing on the right side it looks like there's some doubled up spots there there are some tandem right. spots there okay. and that's sort of formalizing an informal practice by her tenants already so Miss Ellenkel thought in here sort of give the quote unquote crappy crummy spots, spots along the way. <laughs> let's give the crummy spots tenants. to the tenants, right? Because let's give the better, the, the better spots to the people who are coming in. Right, right. That's a slight. It is. Yep, yeah. yep. But you know what? It, let's use whatever we can. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> right? right. Okay. Absolutely. And um, has the Downtown Association been made aware of this just so everybody? No. So we started conversations about this two years ago. No, two years ago, August. You're being generous. Was, yeah. <laughs> As always. And, and, well, I have to say, I mean, I do have to say, you know, Chief Olson, who I always call Officer Olson, so sorry. <laughs> I always demote him every time I speak to him. Um, but Chief Olson and Tom and Michelle and Lynn Barkley, everyone's kind of been, and, and, I can't, and Corey Farina. I mean, I can't tell you the numbers of people that have really worked generously together to try to make, slowly together, but generously together <laughs> to make this all work. And I really do think that if we're able to enforce this and if we're able to, that I really think that it's going to make a difference in terms of, um, uh, of the you know, center being really be able to be used the way it's supposed to be used. I think it's going to make some people who've been parking there all day long pretty unhappy, but it's really, I think, for the benefit of, this, of the town. It's and we continue street. to be, my sister and I continue to be very, very committed to continuing this. You should pray for our long lives because <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we are committed yeah. to this. Well, and I like, I like the notion that DPW is going to be down there making yeah. some improvements and doing some seal coating because I, I also think the you know clear demarcation of where the where the spots are will be helpful as well. Yeah, the I'm, I'm blocking on the engineer's name, but he had Roger also, Fernandez. Who was it? Roger Fernandez. Roger, yeah, yeah, he was terrific, and we were trying to figure out if we could just eke out a few more, you know, to try. And I think we got rid of a dumpster from that somebody <laughs> was using. So I think we've got a few more spaces than we had before. Well, you've worked really hard on this, and uh, as Paul said, you know, we appreciate the commitment to the square. Yeah. For sure. And then finally, I just, you know, and I think I have to say that Chief Olson has said, you know, look, we don't want to check at people if they're, you know, if they're not really aware. So I, I still do think that we should maybe, you know, and this is for under discussion, to, you know, give maybe in the beginning people some warnings before yeah. giving them tickets, right? Like you don't want, you know. It. Sure. Yeah, like yeah. let's Lay let's get another let's get another another something in the newspaper maybe just you know I called a number of the local uh, owners in the in the neighborhood, so mm -hmm. I think we've have done done, it. done what you can do right yeah. yeah and Lynn has been involved from the downtown association from the beginning okay. with me and Betty and now me and Michelle okay so so do you have any questions at all or. I think. And we're open I think. to being, you know, I think Tom and, and Michelle and, and um, Chief Olson, all, we, we're all very flexible. So if this works out, excellent. If it doesn't, we're just going to come back and we're going to fix sure. it again okay. until it works. So work. I like that it, attitude. It seems, it, seems, it seems like a really appropriate step, and um, I, I think it's just an example of how, you know, we all, we all have a common goal here, and, you know, keeping that in mind helps us figure out, you know, what a good step is. And um, I just wouldn't let, if you put those signs up, I wouldn't let it go too long without, you know, if you've got, if you've got, if you've got, if you've got some violators in there, you know, I know sometimes when I always see those signs, I wonder, okay, are they, are they really ticketing or, you know, are those just kind of signs to scare me? Um, I think, I think don't let too much time elapse because, um, <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> he's got his, he's got his <laughs> ticket book. <laughs> Easy, Tiger. <laughs>
Mm -hmm. I will also say that, you know, with the opening of the Heritage Museum, which, you know, we all knew was going to draw traffic to the square, it's, um, it's bringing some vitality, but with it comes the challenge of, of, of parking for everybody. This is, address, this is the second time tonight we're addressing the economic vitality of downtown, of the square, and um, it's a wonderful project. It's all good. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. Absolutely. And we take thank you for your well, thank patience you with much. us. Yeah. Thank you. I, uh, I move that in accordance with Section 3 of the license agreement dated October 15, 2002, the board approved the designation of 12 parking spaces in the merchant's parking lot as shown on a plan entitled Merchant's Parking Lot Designated Parking Plan dated April 16, 2019, for tenant use only during the hours of 8 a.m. through 7 p.m. Second. Discussion, hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming in. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're moving on. We have a couple of appointment votes we're, we're going to do, and this is something that's done annually. So um, at this point, uh, I'll entertain a motion to reappoint the following personnel as special police officers for the town of Hingham for a term ending April 30, 2020. Raymond Abru, Leslie Badger, Ken Corson, Joe Driscoll, Daniel Goldstein, Max Goldstein, Jay Kanderhan, David Hort, Robert Mansfield, Mike DeCue, Mike Murray, Kevin Nguyen, John Nikitas, John Norris, Michael Parker, Mitch Powers, Mike Riley, Charlie Southard, Jimmy Taylor, Russ Way, Jim Wells, Brian Willett. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Entertain a motion to appoint the following officers as court prosecutors and backups for Hingham District Court for a term ending April 30, 2020. Hall PD, Officer Mike Flaherty, Detective Daniel Dunn, Hanover PD, Sergeant Daniel Salvucci, Sergeant Timothy Kane, Rockland PD, Officer Sean Brundage, Officer Jeffrey Dorenzo, Officer Joseph Zielinski, Situate PD, Sergeant Ken Bates, Sergeant James Bullman, Sergeant James Gilmartin, Detective Owen Kirkbride, Norwell PD, Sergeant William Pastorus. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I entertain a motion to appoint the following detectives as agents for the Board of Selectmen to enforce the laws of the Liquor Control Act and the Alcoholic Beverages Control Commission regulations for all licensed liquor establishments in the town of Hingham for a term ending April 30th, 2020. Detective Sergeant Phil Emmett, Detective Phil Tracy, Detective Dan Larry. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that concludes business of the board for April 16th, 2019. Um, as we customarily do, we go around the table. Michelle, I want to thank you for the work you did on the merchant slot. I thought that went really smooth and thank you. Uh, it was good to get that behind us. Well, Mr. Healy, since it's your last meeting, <laughs> I just want to say it's been a pleasure and a privilege to work with you. Um, I'm really grateful that my career in Hingham started under the guidance of this board. Uh, you have an incredible record of service with the community, and I appreciate the time you took with me to take me on a tour of town and try to share your, um, some of your knowledge of the town's history and character and culture with me. Um, I will definitely miss your particular flavor of stewardship <laughs> <laughs> and statesmanship here. <laughs> well said. Um, but I, I wish you well in your next adventure. I think it will not be too far from us. And yes, just thank you for everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thomas. Uh, you know, I, I've said it earlier, and I won't get into mushiness today, but um, Paul, you're an outstanding selectman, an outstanding steward of this town. You love this town. You've made sure that I learned uh, a lot of what I need to know about what this town is and what it means to you and to its residents. Um, the town is better for you having lived in it and for having you, you having served it. Um, I'm a better town administrator for you being in my life, and I'm a better person for you being my friend. So thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Wow, I don't know how to follow that one. <laughs> uh, you know, except to say, um, it's just really been an honor and a privilege uh, to serve on this board. I think that we've worked hard and well together. I think we bring unique, unique set of expertise and unique skill sets and unique views to the table. And you have uh, always impressed me in terms of your preparation, uh, your candor, your guidance, your thoughtfulness. Um, and the one thing I have to say is in every measure of yourself, 
you act in the best interest of this town. And that example uh, is something that I will strive to continue to try to live up to. Uh, you, you have been a mentor, whether you know it or not, not only to this board, but I think to the committees and commissions with, with whom you interact, both in this town and in others. And I've just been so, so proud to be affiliated with you and this board. So thank you, Paul. Thank you, Karen. Thank you very much. So with all of this, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit at a loss for words, which um, it has been a, an honor and a privilege to sit next to you for four years. It is hard for me to think about doing this job without having you sitting next to me. Um, but I've learned so much from your example, um, not just what you do, but how you do it, that um, there's going to be a little, a little bit of Paul Healy uh, in, in hopefully uh, my continued service to the town. And um, I, I think Hingham is just so fortunate to have dedicated volunteers and the Healy family and is is just an example for all of us and that's not just you but that's esther who served so well on on the school committee um it's the example that you've set for your children who are you know in the community and doing things in the community and the healy family reminds us that this town is really built on volunteers and um and I'm so grateful for the opportunity to, you know, to work with you. And um, it will be fun to walk by 209 Main Street during the 4th of July parade. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, Paul, thank, thank you. And, and Esther, thank you um, for, uh, for your generosity of, of time and commitment um, you've you've definitely made this town better, and we're just so grateful. Thank you, Mary. Thank you so much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you know, I was a kid when I started my relationship with the town of Hingham. Um, I worked for Herbie Cole, and later went on to work for Ray Campbell. Um, I was irritated at a development that Tom Hastings <laughs> did so I ran for planning board and 19 years later I, Laura Burns asked me to take her place so here I am uh, I've worked with a ton of good people truly committed to the town I've sat on some great boards none finer than the one I'm on right now uh, you know I honestly don't think that the water company issue would have reached the point it has without the committed <coughs> effort of my colleagues on either side of me, the hard work of our town administrator, assistant town administrator. Uh, it, there's, there's a lot of people that, you know, I'm grateful for, for working so well with me um, and having a sense of humor about some of my quirks and in ways uh, you know serving the town is contagious and you, you know it, to me this has been a labor of love um, I, I have truly enjoyed it I've, I've tried to pass that uh, sense of contribution to my children um, some of whom serve uh, their country as we speak um, we live in a great town, ladies and gentlemen. We, we have something special here. Uh, this is a place where people want to come to live. And, you know, the, the work of town government is part of what makes that happen. And, uh, you know, I, I feel that, you know, it's, it's appropriate for me to um, I'll make room for a successor so that the, you know, the, the board stays healthy and grows. Uh, Mary and Karen will, will do a fine job um, with their new colleague uh, serving the community in, in a way that you know, I continue to remain impressed by and, and with. You know, 
they are high speed, let me tell you. <laughs> um, and I, I want to thank, you know, my wife who, this is the first time she's ever come to a meeting. <laughs> years. <laughs> she says it's not true, um, but I think it is. Uh, I could have never have done this without her support. Um, you know, at one point when I was on the planning board and she was on the school committee, we were out multiple evenings each week and um, we had some rather spirited discussions about um, governance and um, it's good. So I won't go on. I, I look forward to seeing you at town meeting. I really do. And I hope that people come out with a full appreciation of how important this water company question is. Um, delay is not our friend out there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm leaving you with that last message. If you see that starting to occur in this meeting, I want your antennas to go up, please. You know, I've seen a lot of mischief along the way, um, so I won't state it any further, but um, what we're advocating, what we're proposing, well, whether we do it in the public forums or I wave to you at the dump as you go by, um, we would not do this if this wasn't for the best interest of this community. And when my grandchildren's grandchildren look back I want them to say that their great great grandfather made the right move mm -hmm. on this issue. And I hope that you'll join me in that. Truly, I do. Um, this is the right thing for this community. And we can rise above all the noise that the corporate opponent seeks to impose on us and see with clarity. You've been presented this issue in very clear terms. We've had some very, very bright people speak to this. It's been thoroughly vetted by your fellow residents in this community on boards that we place great confidence in. And you, know, you, you will hear it even if you come to the meeting without having a full understanding of the issues. You're going to hear it again on Monday night. So I, I ask you to support us in this. We need a two-thirds vote. Uh, you know, as a member of the planning board, you know, we routinely did two-thirds votes over the years on zoning articles, and sometimes they were opposed, but, you know, never with the kind of uh, ferocity that we've seen, whether it's through, you know, the paid canvassers that are hitting our neighborhoods, with full-page ads in the, in the Hingham Journal, uh, a, a newspaper I once loved. Um, you know, this, this is real, and I, I just urge you not to be distracted um, by all the smoke and mirrors that are coming from the opposition on this issue. So with that, I'll bid you farewell. This is my last time um, that I'll be in this seat, uh, but it has been an honor and a privilege to serve you in behalf of the town of Hingham. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, everybody.